everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Tea and Talking Thursdays. Today, I present to you a miniature podcast episode, which will be available for you to enjoy while I get all the other podcast episodes ready for viewing. And if you're new to this channel, be sure hit that subscribe button to get more content from me. Let's get started. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the essay about how the book, The Lord of the Rings, became popular during the 1960s. Last week, we spoke about the historical context behind the book's rise to popularity. This week, however, we will talk about the rise of fan culture, especially as far as The Lord of the Rings is concerned. Let's get started. The burgeoning popularity of The Lord of the Rings in the 1960s was significantly bolstered by the formation of fan communities. College campuses became hotbeds for Tolkien fandom, with students organizing reading groups, discussions, and even courses dedicated to studying the book. Fanzines, newsletters, and early fan conventions provided platforms for fans to share their enthusiasm and interpretations of the story. Formal organizations like the Tolkien Society founded in 1969 and the Mythopoeic Society founded in 1967 played crucial roles in promoting Tolkien's works. These societies organized events, published scholarly articles, and connected fans across the globe. Their efforts helped to sustain and grow the book's popularity. Beyond the initial wave of interest in the 1960s, In the 1960s, several adaptations of The Lord of the Rings were produced, which helped to introduce the story to new audiences. The BBC's radio adaptation in 1955-1956, though preceding the main wave of 1,960 seconds popularity, laid the groundwork. The 1960s saw further radio adaptations and audio recordings that made the epic accessible in new formats. While the first major film adaptations of The Lord of the Rings would not appear until much later, the 1960s saw the emergence of visual interpretations through artwork. Illustrators like Barbara Remington, whose covers for the Ballantine paperback editions became iconic, contributed to the book's visual identity and appeal. And that's a wrap on this podcast. Tune in next week to learn about the legacy of the popularity of The Lord of the Rings as well as the conclusion of the essay. See you next time! Me. <laughs>